morning, everyone, and welcome to morning worship. I am Pastor DJ Emanuel of Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in historic Tuskegee, Alabama, and we welcome you into this virtual worship space this morning. I'm excited to spend this time with you in the presence of God, and I pray that you will agree with me that this is indeed still worship. We want you to participate. We want you to like and share. We want you to greet your brothers and sisters in Christ this morning right there in the comments as you are uh, watching online. Let them know us. Give a word of encouragement uh, because we all need a word of encouragement during these times. The way we engage with one another is what helps us still be a church. So let's continue to do that. Also, we want you to sing along when we're singing, participate in a responsive reading. Amen. You can put your amens in the comments as well. And don't forget to share this stream with others so that they may be blessed by it as well. If you're watching on Facebook, there's a share button right there. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a share button right there. We want you to share it so that others can be blessed just as you are being blessed. And please stick around for the announcements and the benediction at the conclusion of the service. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This morning, I want to draw your attention to responsive reading, number 547 from the back of our hymnal. It is titled, God the Omnipotent. Now, for those of you who are watching online, uh, I will read the first part and you will read the second part as you see it there on the screen. For those of you who are listening by phone, good morning. Uh, we're glad that you're with us. I will read both parts so that you will get the complete understanding. This is responsive reading number 547 from the back of our church hymnal, and it is titled, God the Omnipotent. And it reads this way. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare to him? Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, altogether, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for your participation in our responsive reading this morning. And, and this morning, I'd like to sing a familiar song with your greater friendship, one that I know will be a blessing to you. It is, I am a friend of God. It's an opportunity for us to assert our relationship with God, that he has truly called us friends. So I pray that you would sing along as we have the song, I am a friend of God. friend of God. I am a friend of God. 
calls me friend Who am I that you are mindful of me That you hear me when I call Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. What a privilege it is to be called a friend of God. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? When I call, is it true that you're thinking of me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. What a blessing it is to be called a friend of God. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. I got a little hand clapping going on there. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. I am a friend of God. 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 You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a 
friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. We serve an awesome God, a wonderful God, a loving God, a God who sees our end from the beginning, a God who loves us with an unsearchable love. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. You call me friend. You call me friend. You call me friend. What a blessing it is to be called a friend of the Most High God. Amen, amen. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Amen. This morning, I want to remind you of our church purpose. Our church purpose is to communicate the gospel message, compelling people to commit to membership, seek spiritual maturity, display evidence of authentic worship, engage in Christian service, and fulfill their purpose in life missions. And I'm glad that we have a faith that we are living on purpose. So I pray that you will take these words to heart and that you will continue to walk forward in the name of Jesus. Well, there's a word from the Lord today, and our scripture will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> that is 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 1 through 11, and we're going to read these verses to give us some background, but ultimately we will spend most of our time around about verse 25 down through about verse 30. So we want to spend, um, give you some background in verses 1 through 11, but then we're going to start um, in, in earnest somewhere around verse 25, and we're going to go through verse 30. So this is 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. And the word of God reads this way. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. And a shield-bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. 
When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Let us pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word and we pray, Father, that today, once again, you will show us what it takes to be a champion, to be a champion in our own lives, in our own families, in our own community. I ask, Father, that you would allow your spirit to work through me for your glory, that this body of Christ, however we may be engaging with this word today, that, Father, we would all be edified and you, Holy Father, will be glorified. Thank you, Lord, so much for your grace and your mercy and the Holy Spirit you have given us to dwell in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen, everyone. It is a good day to look into the Word of God because we have a vision and our vision is being walked out in these scriptures. I tell you, the vision is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And from that verse, here's what we have for a vision for this year. I can. It's simply expressed as I can. And there's a declaration we want you to repeat. You're going to say this after me. I want you to say it with confidence. I want you to say it like you mean it. I can and I will through Christ. I can and I will through Christ. Amen, amen. Well, we started a new series last Sunday. And I want to once again thank all of you for all of your prayers and your support as I have been overcoming uh, COVID-19. Um, the, the process of recovery is slow. I have to watch and monitor my energy. And, and my energy meter, uh, Dr. Manuel, Lady Manuel, is making sure I don't overdo it. And so I'm doing everything that she tells me and doing everything that I can so that I can fully recover and be well. But with this new series, this new series, we're looking at the story of David and Goliath. And with this story, I want to teach you how to be a champion. I want to show you the principles that a champion must embody because we're at a time in our lives where we need the Lord to deliver. We need the Lord to help us and he's going to help us through us. We can and we will through Christ. Be the champions of our own destiny. Last week, we started by talking about God's chosen and we looked at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16 where David, who was overlooked, who was uh, uh, left out and counted out and canceled out, out with the sheep, was actually anointed to be king, the next king over Israel. And so it was a powerful message. If you missed it, please go back and watch it on our Facebook channel, on our YouTube channel. This was a message to get us started, and it set the groundwork for this series. And so what has happened since that time David is, has been anointed, if you kept reading in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David has been anointed to be the next king of Israel. And Saul, King Saul of Israel, had a troubling spirit that had come to him that was tormenting him. And one of his people said, let's find you someone who is skilled with an instrument that could play some music that will soothe you so that this, whenever this spirit comes upon you. And they looked out and they found a young shepherd boy named David. And so we find that David, who was anointed to be the next king, was being brought to the palace so that he could play music for Saul. And Saul kept him there at the palace and David only went home during times that he would go and visit with his family and, and take care of the sheep. So one of these periods of time when David is at home and, and King Saul has gone out to war, Israel and the Philistines are arrayed for battle. And that's where we find ourselves today. And a champion of the, of the Philistines has come forward, this champion named Goliath from Gath. He was a giant. He was a very tall man. He was very large and very strong. And he issued a challenge saying, I defy the armies of Israel and whoever it is among you, if you would send somebody out 
to fight against me. If they kill me, we will serve you. But if I kill that person, you will have to serve me. And so Jesse, during this time when they're out and they're arrayed for battle, they haven't actually begun the battle. Jesse, David's father, has sent him to go check on his three oldest brothers because his oldest brothers were a part of Saul's army. I want to share two things with you today. I want two observations that I think if we could wrap our minds around these observations, we would know better how to be a champion for the Lord. The first is, I want to talk about David's comprehension. David's comprehension. And I want us to drop down to verse 25. This is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 25 and 26. David's comprehension. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 25 and 26. And the word of God reads this way. So the man of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? When you read this chapter, when you read chapter 17, you will find that Goliath has been issuing this challenge for 40 days. Every day. He has gone out and stood in the midst of that valley and he has issued the challenge that you need to provide Israel, you need to provide a champion to come and fight against me because I'm the champion of, uh, of the Philistines. I'm from Gath and I'm a giant. I'll, you should provide somebody to fight against me. I defy the armies of Israel. When David arrives at the battlefront to make his delivery and to check on his brothers, he hears and he sees what's going on. The soldiers asked David if he had seen Goliath. They said the king would reward the person who killed Goliath with great riches. They would that the king would give this warrior his daughter's hand in marriage and make him exempt from taxes. The soldiers, listen now, the soldiers heard what Goliath said with their natural ears. The soldiers saw with their natural eyes. They even envisioned a natural, physical, material outcome to the situation. But David comprehended the situation differently. And this is what a champion has to do. You see, David heard with spiritual ears. He didn't just hear with his physical ears. He heard differently. He asked a question, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Watch this. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? When David saw and heard Goliath, he saw and heard in the context of his relationship with God. I want to say that again. When David saw and heard Goliath, he saw Goliath and he heard Goliath in the context of David's own relationship with God. In David's mind, think about this, in David's mind, God was maker of the heavens and the earth. In David's mind, God was the one who made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob that caused them to become a nation. God was the one who parted the Red Sea and delivered his people uh, and delivered Israel from slavery. In David's mind, God was the giver of the promised land on which he was standing at that very moment. In David's mind, God made them, the children of Israel, into a holy nation, and they had the sign of circumcision as proof that they were God's people. Israel belonged to God as his chosen people. The army of Israel 
was the army of God himself. So David didn't just see that he was defying, that Goliath was defying Israel. He saw Goliath defying the armies of God. He didn't see Goliath champion of Gath. He saw Goliath was already defeated by God. He didn't see Goliath as being someone who was special or unique. He saw a man who was not chosen by God. Goliath was not about, uh, not a part of this holy nation. He was not in covenant with God. And Goliath was not a recipient of God's promises. It didn't matter how tall he was. It didn't matter how strong Goliath happened to be. He was still just an uncircumcised Philistine in David's eyes. David comprehended this situation totally different from everybody else around him. This is why this is important. When you comprehend the situations in your life from a God context, let me start that over. When you comprehend, hear, see, understand, when you comprehend the situations in your life from a God context, your comprehension changes dramatically. There's a big difference between saying, looking at your family situation and saying, my family is falling apart and being able to say the family that God blessed me with is being in, uh, uh, assaulted by ungodly influences. See, there's a big difference there. If you just see things falling apart, but you can't see from God's perspective what's happened, you're not in the position of a champion. You've got to be able to comprehend from a God context. There's a big difference between uh, saying out loud, I have, I'm having some problems on my job, and then saying the people on my job are rejecting the blessing God has given them through my employment. See, some of us forget that we go to receive a paycheck, but the people receive our presence and the presence of God with us that we are blessed wherever we are. We are blessed in the city and we are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come, when we go, when we rise up, when we sit down, when we show up, we seize the ground we stand on. We are blessed to be a blessing. When you look at it from a God context, then you understand it's not just that I'm having problems on my job. They're rejecting what God has brought to the table through me. And, and by the way, if they reject me strong enough, God will do something about it. And God might reposition me to another place where someone will appreciate the gifts, the talents, the ability, the kindness, the grace, the mercy, the compassion, everything that God brought with me when I came to that job. You see, there's a big difference between saying that some person is your enemy and that they don't like you versus saying this person has chosen to reject God's grace through me. You have to understand, champions comprehend differently. Champions see things through the lens of faith. Champions hear things through the filter of the Holy Spirit. Champions comprehend things through a spiritual context. And this is what David is displaying for us in this passage today. He's not just hearing and seeing in a physical way. He's hearing seeing and comprehending in the spirit. You've got to do that in your everyday life. The second thing and final thing I'm sharing with you today, only two things we're sharing. The first was David's comprehension, but now I want to talk about David's confidence. David's confidence. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 28 through 30. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 28 through 30. Well, here we go. The scripture says this. Now, Eliab, his oldest brother. Now, this is talking about David. This is his oldest brother. Now, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. So here it is, Eliab, one of 
uh, Jesse's sons, his oldest son is there. And while he is there, David shows up and David is causing a commotion by asking questions about what's happening with this Goliath. Uh, and Eliab becomes angry. He be, the Bible says he becomes angry. And he had every reason to be angry. He had every reason to be jealous. He had every reason to be envious. Why? Because he was passed over. He was, he was going to receive his father's inheritance, Jesse's inheritance, but David was going to receive a kingdom. Remember last week, it was Eliab that when Samuel saw him, Samuel said, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. And the Lord said, don't, don't look at him now. Uh, I have rejected him. He is not the one. He is not the one you're going to anoint to be king. He was passed over when the anointing ceremony got started. You see, Eliab was a line soldier. You hear that? He was a line soldier in Saul's army. He wasn't necessarily a general or anything like that. He was just another soldier in the army. But David was Saul's personal musician. Eliab only saw Saul on the battlefield, but David saw Saul, King Saul, in the palace. So Eliab had every reason to be angry, to be jealous, to be envious, to think that David is prideful. David only left Saul sparingly when he went home to be with his family. So here, Eliab and the rest of the army had been out in that valley for 40 days, and none of them had the courage or confidence to face Goliath. Eliab had to put David in his place to save face. Here it is, your little brother, your littlest brother, your, the eighth one, the, the, the last brother has come up and he has shown up and he is speaking more boldly than you are. He's speaking more boldly than everybody else around you. You got to put him in this place. Why did you come here? Who did you leave those few sheep with? Not understanding those few sheep were his inheritance, but he had to make it sound like it was just a few so that he could put David down in front of everybody else. He even said that David was prideful. He probably thought that because David was anointed and David was going to be king. He was probably envious of him. He, he called David insolent. He said he had an insolent heart, but was David prideful? Was David insolent? I don't think so. I believe David was confident. I believe David was confident in his anointing. David was confident in the spirit of God that was upon him. When Samuel anointed David, we read it last week, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord was upon him from that day forth. The spirit of the Lord was so strong. Now listen to this. This is powerful. The spirit of the Lord was so strong on David, his worship, his songs, his worship was able to subdue the evil spirit that had come upon King Saul. David was anointed and he was confident in his anointing. This is a confidence in God that we must embrace if we hope to one day be a champion like David. It's a confidence that isn't manufactured through false bravado. You know, some people talk themselves into confidence. They say great things about themselves and eventually they fool themselves into believing that they are what they say they are. This is not that kind of confidence. This is a confidence in God. It's not a confidence that is born out of conceit. This confidence is based, uh, uh, it, it, isn't, it isn't based, this confidence that, that, that God gives us, this confidence isn't based on our abilities. It's not based on our power or our individual might. The confidence of a spiritual champion is anchored in God. You see, before I knew the Lord, I would tell people, I'm not conceited, I'm convinced. I used to say that because I believed in my abilities. I believed in my achievements. But now that I'm saved, now that I know the Lord, now that I know who sits on the throne of my heart, my attitude has become more like the Apostle Paul. Over in Philippians 3, 7, and 8, you can write this down. He says this, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain 
Christ. Let me tell you something. Everything that I have done is just rubbish compared to knowing who Christ is. I'm not confident in my ability to speak. I'm confident because I know that when I speak, I know God's going to tell me what to say. I'm not confident in my ability to sing. I'm confident that the Holy Spirit will inhabit my praises. I'm not confident in my intelligence or my experience or my finances or my social standing or anything else this world uses to judge people. I'm confident in God. I'm like David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That's You got to have some confidence to call out the enemy like that. Who is this unwelcome distraction? Who is this evil presence that keeps trying to torment my life? I have to call those things out. I have to be like David. Who, who is this demonic sickness that's trying to oppress my body? It's not because I'm so great, but it's because I serve a God who is the greatest. How dare the people challenge the army of God? How dare they come up against God's anointed? How dare they defy the presence of God? God himself that is in my life. How dare they come against the peace that God has given me. I have some confidence not being conceited. I'm just convinced that God is God. I'm convinced that God is able. I'm convinced that God's got my back. How dare they try to rob me of my blessings. I know that what God has for me, it is for me. Don't you know who I represent? I see that's, that's some confidence right there when you can start just asking the enemy. Don't you know who I represent? I'm a part of the army of the living God. Don't you know who I fight for? Don't you know who rules my life? I'll tell you who he is. He's my deliverer. He's my redeemer. He's my provider. He's my keeper. He's my sustainer. I am confident that no matter what happens, no matter what transpires in my life, that God is more than able to deliver me from all of the uncircumcised, un unpromised, non-covenant, having, backbiting folk that would ever come against me because I don't go in my own strength. I've learned to be a champion because I I can comprehend what's really going on in the spirit. And I've got some confidence that comes only from God. Amen. Amen. I hope that this message has encouraged you. I hope that it has blessed you to look at your life a different way. To begin to see and to hear with spiritual ears. So that you will see and you will know and have confidence that God is able to deliver you when you choose to be a champion. I want to tell you that God created you and God loves you. But you know, our sins have separated us from God. Those are those things that are not pleasing in God's sight. But you know, God's love was so much greater. He sent his son Jesus to die to pay the penalty for our sins. And the Bible says if we will confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we would be saved. If you've never made that profession of faith, if you've never confessed him as Lord of your life, if you've never uh, asked him to come into your heart, we, we want to give you that opportunity right now. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for creating me and loving me. I realize I have sinned in my life and I've been separated from you. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe he rose from the grave according to the Bible. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life and Savior of my soul. I ask that you send your Holy Spirit into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, please let us know. You can put it right there in the comments. I commit my life to Jesus. You can also go to Greater Friendship. I want to encourage you to go to our church website, greaterfriendship.com, and there click on the button that says become a member. You'll find out how to become a part of our church. If you're a person who lives in the local area, Tuskegee-Macon County area, or if you're a person 
who is a remote uh, or, or, or what we call an e-church member. You live in another place, but God is blessing you and feeding you and, and, and doing great things for you um, through this ministry. We have a way for you to become a part of our church that way as well. So we invite you to go there, fill out that form. We just want to celebrate your new life in Jesus Christ. I want to remind you that we have the opportunity to worship the Lord through giving. It is one of the things that God has commanded. And I must say, Greater Friendship, your giving is amazing. And God is pleased. And I pray that according to his word, he will do exactly what he said. That as you have brought tithes into the storehouse, so that there will be meat in God's house, that he, he says, prove me now, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, so much so that you don't have room enough to receive. I pray for overflow blessings for every person who has been a contributor to God's cause and to God's church. May he continue to bless you. You can give on our church website, greaterfriendship.com, by clicking on the blue button that says Give Now with Givelify. Or you can download the Givelify app and you can make your contribution that way. If you need to mail your contribution, you can mail that contribution to Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 606 Brown Street, Tuskegee, Alabama, 36083. That's Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 606 Brown Street, Tuskegee, Alabama, 36083. I want to remind you that we have Bible study on Thursday evenings at 6 o'clock p.m. with Reverend James W. Jackson, Sr. We are so grateful to him um, for his faithfulness to keep our Bible study, our Thursday night Bible study moving forward. I also want to tell you if you want to become a part of that Bible study, you can learn how to do that on greaterfriendship.com. Just go there, fill in your information in the form and submit it. And Reverend Jackson will be able to contact you with information on how to join that Zoom Bible study. I also want to remind you that we have prayer call on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. It is a powerful time for us to come together to lift up our prayer requests. I think that by participating in the prayer call, many of us are learning how to pray. And I pray that it strengthens your prayer life. I know that the prayer call has strengthened my prayer life. It has strengthened, I believe, the prayer life for our entire church. And I believe that's one of the reasons why we walk in blessings. We knew for years that there were generations that prayed for us, and we are living on those prayers. And now we are praying not only for ourselves, but for our future. And the next generation will live on our prayers. So thank you so much for your participation in our prayer call. Lastly, I want to invite you to connect with our church. We're on uh, social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also go to our church website, share your email address so that you can receive updates. And I want you to connect with one another. Each one of us has the opportunity to be a blessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes we may sit back and we'll say, well, no one from the church has called me or no one from the church has reached out to me. But we're all the church. And in some cases, God is waiting on us to reach out to others. All of us have a word of encouragement. All of us have a prayer that can be prayed. All of us have something that we can do to provide comfort for people in these difficult times. Text your brothers and sisters in Christ. Call your brothers and sisters in Christ. Encourage them. Pray for them. Find out what's going on so that they don't feel as if they're alone going through the struggles of this life. We are the body of Christ and the Bible says and we are members one of another so let us all continue to engage with one another even on this stream you know maybe this is a good time for you to reply to someone's comment and to let them know that you've been thinking about them you've been praying for them and that God is going to bless them let the church say amen let the church say amen let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. Let us pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I want to give you thanks and praise for the strength you have lent to me today to stand and to talk about your word. 
And I pray, Father, that as we have received this word today, that it will go down into our hearts and it will bring forth fruit 10, 20, 100 fold so that we can see the blessing of God in the land of the living. I ask, Father, for your continued protection over all of our church family and all of those who are engaging with this service. I pray, Father, that you would keep them safe from uh, the, the things that are happening in our world. And, and I ask, Father, that you would also provide for every need. There are things we just need, God, dealing with inflation, dealing with the increase in prices, dealing with health issues. God, we need thee every hour. So please, God, show up on our behalf. And I ask, Father, that you would prompt us, that you would poke and prod us, that you would spur us on to righteousness and good deeds and also to good deeds toward one another. Teach us how to show hospitality, especially to the saints of God. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Well, amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing this service with others. We pray God's richest blessings on you and everyone that's connected to you, not only now, but in the days and weeks to come, that you may see the power of God released in your life. God bless you all.